Welcome to this talk about Ruby DNS. Ruby DNS is the Swiss Army knife of DNS servers. It builds an event machine to provide an asynchronous event driven DNS server that responds to individual requests as they come in using a Ruby domain specific language. Today, in this introduction, I'm going to show you how to create a simple DNS server. Firstly, we're going to start off by installing Ruby DNS using Bundler. Firstly, we create a gem file and add gem Ruby DNS. We then use the bundle install command to install Ruby DNS and all its dependencies. So now we're going to open the text editor. In this case, I'm going to use TextMate and we're going to create a file for the DNS server code. So here we're going to start with some boilerplate code. Firstly, the list of interfaces that we're going to listen on. You'd normally want to listen on both UDP and TCP, typically on the same port. Secondly, the DNS server itself. The run server block contains a set of rules which are matched against incoming requests in order from top to bottom. Finally, the otherwise block is run if no rules match. In this case, we're returning a failure, non-existent domain. So let's verify this is working as we expect it to. Firstly, I'm starting the server, which you can see is listening on two ports. Now we're going to use dig to talk to the DNS server and verify that it's returning NX domain as an error code. Here we see NX domain is given, as we expected. If you are writing your own DNS server, the error message when an exception is thrown in a rule will be serve fail. Let's quickly verify what serve fail looks like. As expected, we received serve fail as the response status. In addition, a backtrace of the exception will be reported to the error log. So now let's add something a bit more interesting. We're going to write a pattern matching rule which will match any domain name that includes the word fortune. And specifically, we're going to match incoming requests which are for internet text resource records. When the rule matches, it will execute its associated block. The first argument called transaction will include all information about the incoming request as well as how to respond. In this case, as we are matching text records, we will respond with the string hello world. Now let's restart the server and verify that it works. The server has been started. Now let's use dig to communicate with the server. This time we need to request the text record for fortune. As expected, we got back a text record with the string hello world. Now, perhaps we can do something more interesting. I have on my computer this command fortune, which when executed returns an entertaining message. Why don't we feed this into our DNS server so that we can access these messages through dig. The modification we need to make is really quite simple. We simply need to modify the response to be the output of the fortune command. Now let's restart the server and check the result. As you can clearly see, we now have a DNS server that responds pointless messages through text records. This concludes the example. As you can probably see, Ruby DNS provides unparalleled configurability and flexibility. Many interesting systems have been built on top of Ruby DNS, including tools for developers, system administrators, and security researchers. I recommend that you take a look at the example servers included with the Ruby DNS source code to get started. 
Thanks for your time and interest in Ruby DNS. Thank <laughs> you.